Warm greetings. Today is Thursday, July 18, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I would like to discuss the atmospheric changes anticipated over the coming weeks as we approach the peak of the season, which extends from August to October. It is projected that the peak of the season will be hyperactive in the tropical Atlantic region due to significant changes in atmospheric conditions across the main cyclonic development zone. This projected change comes after an inactive period we've seen over the past few weeks, and is expected to last at least until the end of July. Following the formation of Hurricane Barrel and its trajectory through the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, we've had an inactive period in cyclonic activity thanks to an unfavorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which promotes stability across the tropical Atlantic. This has also caused a large cloud of Saharan dust to dominate conditions between the Caribbean and Western Africa, which has helped limit rainfall and low-pressure activities and prevented tropical waves from having development potential during July. In the following image, you can see in reddish color the conditions that are not favorable for cyclone formation, corresponding to a phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation that promotes cyclonic activity in the Western Pacific region and limits cyclonic activity in the Eastern Pacific and Atlantic. However, over the coming weeks, this energy will continue its trajectory eastward and eventually, during the first two weeks of August, should move over the Atlantic and Africa region, creating favorable conditions for cyclonic development again. Unfortunately, this would coincide with the peak of the season, so it is important for everyone to be very attentive to the peak of the season. The important thing is not to let your guard down, especially when August begins, because the low activity we've had in July is temporary, and a significant change is expected during August. Let's talk about the anticipated changes that will allow the development of new tropical cyclones. First, note that the peak concentration of Saharan dust we've recorded this week has already begun to decrease, and it is very likely that the tropical Atlantic currently has the highest concentrations that will be recorded for the rest of the year. In fact, you can see that the concentrations of Saharan dust particles have started to decrease dramatically, just as we mentioned in our previous video. If it behaves normally, it should continue to decrease, specifically between August and September. Therefore, soon the Saharan dust will not be a significant impediment to cyclone formation in the tropical Atlantic. Additionally, long-term models are projecting that a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation could establish itself over the African continent and the Indian Ocean. Under these conditions, the Atlantic can be extremely favorable for the formation of systems. Note that the European model members project that starting from August 11th. A favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation will establish, which is why we anticipate that the second half of August should be particularly active in the Atlantic. This aligns well with the formation of cyclones we have seen since the high cyclonic activity era in the North Atlantic, which began in 1995. Look at this graph where, from mid-July to mid-August, we have seen little cyclonic activity over the last 30 years. I show you this image to demonstrate that it is normal for July and early August to be quite calm in the Atlantic. But then, as the Saharan dust decreases, wind shear diminishes, and ocean temperatures reach their peak, the peak season begins, which extends approximately from mid-August to mid-October. This period is known as the peak of the season, and is when the greatest cyclonic activity occurs in the Atlantic. We must be prepared for this peak, especially since this season is expected to be hyperactive. We emphasize that the forecast of a hyperactive season remains, because we do not have the El Nino phenomenon in the Pacific, so wind shear will be below normal. Additionally, warmer than normal temperatures persist across the tropical Atlantic and the main cyclonic development zone, at levels near the historical record set in 2023. As I mentioned in the previous video this week, we have seen a behavior where waters have begun to warm again because the Saharan dust has started to decrease. After approximately four weeks where temperatures remained constant due to Saharan dust and stronger than normal trade winds, the main cyclonic development zone has started to warm again and is anticipated to continue warming at least until September and October, when it should reach its peak. Also note that, on average, sea surface temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone are already exceeding the typical maximum average reached between September and October. Recapping what we discussed in the previous video, notice that the distribution of temperature anomalies, which are warmer than usual, is more evident in the Caribbean Sea region and just east of the Lesser Antilles. Meanwhile, just west of Africa and near the Canary Islands and the Gulf of Guinea, we have cooler than usual temperatures. This will likely impact where cyclones develop this year. Although temperatures are at record levels between 45 degrees west longitude to the Caribbean Sea, last year they extended across the tropical Atlantic and near the Cape Verde and Canary Islands. Even though the average sea surface temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone are similar to what we saw last year, this year's distribution is focused mainly in the Caribbean region and just east of the Lesser Antilles. This should favor cyclone formation west of 40 degrees west longitude, providing much energy for rapid strengthening as they move through the Caribbean Sea. For comparison, see the current temperature anomalies in the Atlantic and compare them to the 2005 season. 
which was hyperactive with the formation of several major hurricanes. There is a significant difference, and this is our major concern and the reason why the formation of powerful hurricanes is being forecasted. Unfortunately, after a stall in water warming, trade winds across the tropical Atlantic are projected to be below normal over the coming weeks. This can help these waters continue to warm. So, gradually, we are starting to see how the cooling effect of Saharan dust and stronger-than-normal trade winds begin to dissipate, and we anticipate an additional warming period as we approach the peak of the season. This is definitely not good news, and aligns with the forecast we have been discussing over the past months. Lastly, I wanted you to see the latest projections of global seasonal models. Starting with the set of North American models, notice that they project sea surface temperatures to remain warmer than normal across the main cyclonic development zone during the peak of the season. Additionally, notice the possible development of the Atlantic Nino phenomenon, which can hinder cyclone formation just west of Africa. However, once they cross 45 degrees west longitude, conditions will be much more favorable for cyclone formation. This is not favorable, as it can increase the risk of these cyclones reaching the Caribbean region. When we look at precipitation anomaly projections, the European model is projecting that between August, September and October, we will have above normal precipitation across the main cyclonic development zone and the Caribbean Sea. This can be an indication of strong tropical waves moving through the region, some of which should form into tropical cyclones. Additionally, the ensemble of European models also shows a band of above normal precipitation, extending from 40 degrees west longitude towards the west and in the Caribbean Sea region, which also appears to be a pattern that would favor more westward trajectories due to the high pressure in the North Atlantic being stronger than usual during the peak of the season. Again, this increases the risk of impact for the Caribbean, Central America, Mexico, and the southeastern United States. The ensemble of North American models also projects more rain than usual across the tropical Atlantic and towards the Northeast Caribbean, suggesting considerable activity between August, September, and October. Similarly, the CANSIPS model also shows a lot of rain in the Caribbean Sea and in the main cyclonic development zone, suggesting more westward trajectories than we saw during 2023. This is because the Azores' high pressure is expected to be quite strong this year. In conclusion, after an inactive period in July, we anticipate that the peak of the season will be hyperactive, particularly from the second week of August, as the Saharan dust should continue to decrease over the coming weeks, sea surface temperatures should continue warming and remain at levels close to the record set last year. Additionally, a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation will move through the region by mid-August. These factors should end the inactivity we've seen over the past few weeks. Additionally, wind shear is expected to remain below normal in the Atlantic, thanks to the absence of the El Niño phenomenon in the Pacific. The development of the Atlantic Niño and cooler-than-usual temperatures between the Canary Islands and Cape Verde can initially limit cyclone formation in the eastern Atlantic. But once the tropical waves cross 40 degrees west longitude, they will encounter record high temperatures and favorable conditions for cyclone formation. Unfortunately, it seems that westward trajectories will be favored this year. Well, with that, I say goodbye. Here at Hurricane Info, we will continue to stay alert to keep you informed. Please pay close attention, especially during August. To stay informed, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. Well, with that, I say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video.